All right, so let's take a gander here today. Yes, that's what I'm saying. All right, so let's look today. We're going to use relationships in similar right triangles, but we do need to know certain proportions first. So, uh, and what we did yesterday was simplifying radicals. So when we cross multiply here, x times x is, anybody, anybody? X squared. X squared. And that's going to equal 36. Okay, now when you take the square root of both sides, don't forget that uh, you will always get a plus or minus here. Always get a plus or minus. So in the end, the answer is x is equal to either positive 6 or negative 6 because both of those numbers work in this case. Positive x squared is 36 and negative x squared is 36. <laughs> Salud. Okay, next up is uh, the same idea here. I can just jump to x squared equals 200. And then when I simplify that, I get plus or minus 10 radical 2. How did I get? Nothing. All right. So in this above example right here, when x is repeated, this is called a geometric mean. But let's unpack what geometric mean actually means. Let's pretend that you saw a little, little itty bitty ant on the ground, right? That is my artist rendition of an ant. Okay. And then here's you which that's a big old ant. Maybe that's a tarantula. And you look down at poor little ant and say, hmm, I wonder what it's like to be you. So what would you have to stand next to to feel like this ant tarantula thing? Oh, what, what would I have to stand next to? Good, a very, very, very tall building. And that's not even tall enough. I'm going to have to go off page to make it happen. So if you stood next to a very, very large building, Empire State Building or some other, you know, John Hancock Building, then maybe you would say, oh, that's the perspective of an ant. So look at the ratio. Look at the perspective here. An ant compared to me is like me compared to a building. And notice that I'm in that equation twice. So how would we solve for... Uh, the geometric mean between 5 and 25. So effectively, what we're doing is I have the number 5, and I want to compare it to some number. And that same number when is going to be uh, compared to 25, like that. So that's the setup. Anytime you're asked to find the geometric mean, your variable gets squared. So 5 compared to my geometric mean is my geometric mean compared to 25. So qu quickly you know that if you had to estimate it, you would say, what, uh, anywhere from 10 to 15, probably 10 to 15. But we don't know exactly offhand, so we have to do some calculations. So cross multiply x squared, and um, 5 times 25 is 125. Now, the one caveat here is although we do take the square root, and whenever you take the square root of a... Um, uh, of an equation like this, you should do plus and minus. Uh, just to give you a heads up, geometric mean is always going to be the positive. We're always going to talk about the positive version of it. It is true there's a negative one that shows up, but um, we're only considering the positive. So um, when I do break this up, just to show you what happens, we already did the 5 and the um, 25. I didn't need to factor it further. So x squared is equal to a pair of 5s comes out, and that's not a square, that's an x x equals a pair of fives comes out, and this five is locked in place. So there's my exact answer. There's my exact answer. But, of course, if you're talking to your friend and you wanted to know what that number is, five radical five is not a very nice number. So if you were to take the approximation, just plug radical 125 in your calculator to get an 11.2-ish would be. So... 5 compared to 11.2 is like 11.2 compared to 25. So parts of a triangle, uh, parts of a right triangle, things that we need to know. So I'm actually going to rotate this to help us out a little bit on some cases. All right. Uh, first off, you know that this is my right angle. And, and when I'm talking about the, tr the right, uh, the triangle, I'm, I'm talking about this big one here. Uh, yes, it's true. There are other ones that are formed by that uh, additional segment there. 
which we'll mention in a moment. So uh, the sides that are the sides that include the right angle are called legs. So each one of these is a leg. You already know that this is your hypotenuse. Again, hypotenuse means to pull tightly, like a string or a rope being pulled from a wall to the ground. And, whoa, bless you. Notice that if I go from a vertex and I go 90 degrees to another side here, that's called an altitude. And it's easier to see that it's an altitude if I rotate the uh, shape. So if I put the hypotenuse on the bottom here, notice that it looks, oh look, it's going straight up to that point up there. So it does, at, from this perspective, look like an altitude as you would consider it normally. And I do also want to point out to you that when you draw this hypotenuse, when you draw this altitude, the hypotenuse gets split up. It gets split up. So we're actually going to label the two segments there as segment one, and it actually doesn't matter which one is segment one or segment two. In the end, they're just segments, a, a broken up segment and a broken up segment. So the hypotenuse gets divided into two pieces whenever I draw the altitude. Now here's something absolutely amazing. Um, so I call this the donkey method. This is only Swensonism. There is no, no one else on the planet, as far as I know, does this. Um, only because I was trying to figure out a way to make it easier and so to remember. So <clears throat> I'll read it and then you will read it to your partner because it sounds a little bit confusing. In a right triangle, the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse divides the hypotenuse into two segments. The length of the altitude, the length of the altitude is the geometric mean of the lengths of the two segments. So notice I had the two S's there, but that's because segment one and segment two. So if I were to set this up as an equation, if I were to set this up as an equation, it would look like this. That one segment, and it actually doesn't matter which one, so I'll just call it segment one, compared to the altitude is like the altitude compared to the other segment segment two. So I call this the donkey method because the altitude is the geometric mean between the two segments. Why is this true? Well, notice how many triangles do you see in this uh, shape here? Three. Good. I see one small triangle, one medium triangle, and then the large triangle that's surrounding the whole thing. Now guess what's true about all three of those triangles? They are similar, and here's why. Look at this. Here is a, a pair of angles, because this small triangle and the big triangle, they share this angle. So that's angle right there. Now, the big triangle, the big, big triangle has a right angle there. And the small triangle has a right angle there. So guess what? The small one and the big one are similar by AA. Do that exact same reasoning for the medium triangle up here, because uh, the big triangle and that one share, and then on top of that, they have uh, both right angles. So therefore, two and three are similar. So therefore, by a transitive property, these two have to be similar as well, which means all the triangles here are similar, and that works for every single triangle ever, ever, ever uh, right triangle. So watch the magic. Let me do it again. Whoa, what's now true? Every single one of those triangles that we have there are all similar. Oh, let me do it again. Every single one of those tri- Oh, let me do it again. Boop, let me do it again. Boop, let me do it again. Every single one, all the way to infinity, as, as micromanaged small that you can get. That, and, and they're all similar. Every single one of them is going to be similar. So it's quite a, a beautiful little sort of fractal feel things. Okay, so... Now this next method, and this will be the last one we'll look at for uh, this, and then we'll just practice, practice, practice. I call it the lash method only because that's what I came up with. Okay, in a right triangle, the altitude from the right triangle, so here's our altitude drawn right there, uh, from the right triangle, uh, from the right angle to the hypotenuse, divides the hypotenuse into two segments, same as. 
but the length of each leg, the length of each leg, so here is a leg, so I'll call it leg one, in this case leg one, um, <clears throat> of the right triangle is the geometric mean of the hypotenuse, that's the whole thing, hypotenuse, and the segment adjacent to the leg, the segment that's adjacent to the leg. So that's why I said lash. Here's where lash comes from. The leg is the geometric mean between the adjacent segment and hypotenuse. Adjacent segment and hypotenuse. So this is a perspective thing. Once this diagram has an altitude drawn, I'm going to ignore the altitude. So all I'm doing is comparing this leg, and the leg is the geometric mean, so the leg is the one that repeats, between this segment there and the hypotenuse, like that. And the same is going to hold true for the other leg. If, I, if I'm talking about this leg right here, I now talk about this segment over here and the hypotenuse there. The leg is the geometric mean between the adjacent segment and hypotenuse. This leg is the geometric mean between the adjacent segment and hypotenuse. So it's about perspective. The leg corresponds with that segment. This leg corresponds with that segment. On page two, let's practice a little bit. Which method are we going to use on this one? We'll notice the things that are marked and not marked. What do I call this one right here? Starts with an A. It's the altitude, so I'm going to use the donkey method because the, the altitude is a geometric mean. So quickly I set it up, 20 repeats itself. So the altitude is the geometric mean between the two segments. It never matters where you put the X or the 12. You can flip them around if you would like because in the end when you cross multiply and solve, it'll all end up being the same. All right, so this one, in other words, this one gave us the answer. Now what we're trying to do is find the X. Do not be in the habit of, of repeating X all the time. The X is not the thing that repeats all the time. What repeats all the time is the geometric mean. The altitude is the geometric mean here. Over here, the leg is the geometric mean, so X will repeat. All right, so when we cross multiply and solve, let me just go ahead and do that. Here I get 12X, and here I get 400, and X is going to give me, or sorry, Sorry, 33 and one-third uh, is our final answer. Or it would have, could have been like this, 100 divided by 3. You could leave it like that as well. All right. Now this next one. Notice what I see here is the L, the leg. So I'm going to use the lash method. The leg is, in this, in this case, the uh, X. So the leg is the geometric mean between the adjacent segment, which is 5, and the hypotenuse, which is 13. Nicely labeled for me in this case. Not always going to happen like that, but it's nicely labeled for me. Okay, now when we solve that one, I'm running out of room there, so I'm going to go up here. Uh, when I cross multiply, I get x squared equals 5 times 13. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not even going to bother multiplying that together. Why? Well, yet. Because in the end, remember when we're simplifying these radicals, we keep splitting up even further. So why would I multiply them together only to split them up again just a moment later? So if I can keep factoring and there are any fa factors to circle, then I would. But in this case, I'm actually done. It doesn't, um, it doesn't go any further. So x is going to be square root of 65. If you wanted to know what the approximate value is because you wanted to get a better grip on it, Square root of 64 is 8, right? So this has to be 8 point something, like 0, 5-ish. Good. Thanks for pointing that out. It should be up here. It should be 5 times 13. And I should have taken the square root of both sides. So there we go. So that this square root cancels out. So I, I prematurely put the square root there out of excitement. All right. Which method are you going to use on C? <laughs> so this one's going to be the donkey method where the altitude is x. So again... X does not always repeat, but because X is the altitude, I will uh, repeat that. And then it's between the two uh, uh, segments there. Again, it doesn't matter where you put the 12 and the 20, as long as you get them, uh, one of them's top, one of them's bottom. Um, that's the setup. I'll let you solve that one. Now, this one looks funny. Which method are we going to use on this one? 
We're going to use lash. Why? Because here's an unknown that has a leg. So the leg is the geometric mean, so that means y is going to repeat. And remember what we have to do. It's the adjacent segment. So how long is this segment right here? 30. It's 30. Good. We had to um, take a moment and we had to subtract the 5 from the 35. So this is a helper number, not a number that shows up in my uh, actual E equation. So the 35 does show up, and this 30 shows up right there. Salud. So now when we cross multiply, I'll slow it down so I don't want to throw all my radicals up yet. And then, so here is a good example where I'm not going to multiply out yet, just because um, I'm going to have to factor anyways when I reduce. Now when I take the square root of both sides, square root of both sides. I'm, I'm temporarily ignoring the negative that happens. So don't be in the habit of always, of never writing the negative. So when you get to algebra two, you're gonna have to always do plus or minus there. All right, so now I'm gonna start breaking things up. Six and five, and this one's seven and five. So easily I see if five comes out. And I'm just gonna go a little bit further to see if there's anything else that repeats.